Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a Friday video. This will be not super long, but probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, we're going to take a look at Alex Ross today. There's a few reasons. The main reason, honestly, is Alex has been on YouTube now for a while. And generally speaking, what it had been in the past, as far as I had seen, is just little, little kind of cool video clips, promos of things that he's doing and whatnot. But um, last night I was checking out his channel a little bit, and he's actually showing tutorials now of himself working. They're really, really cool. So I want to recommend them, not even if you're just an artist, if you're just a fan of art in general, they're really, really cool to see. And I mean, I've talked about this in other videos where I've, I've, um, you know, discussed Alex's work a little bit. I've seen his originals in person because he used to do Astro City covers for Wildstorm. They are flawless in person. I mean, they are they are so perfectly executed and they're quite big too. So it's really really impressive. But I thought you all would enjoy that. So I've got Alex Ross on the mind, and I thought you know let's let's do some Alex Ross. I I. I, I like um, the DC stuff that he does. I like the stuff that he does for other companies. And then his Marvel stuff is always great too. Uh, so today we're going to look at the DC stuff. And then quick heads up, I'm going to be taking a break from YouTube for probably two or three weeks. I need to save up some money. And so I, I really need to work right now and actually earn some cash. What I'm trying to do is I've got like a target goal that I want to hit. And then I can I can pull off the gas of like having to just like um, like chase money, barely cover bills. It's getting annoying, and so I need to I need to knuckle down for a few weeks and get some shit done. So I'm gonna do it, and uh, I'll be back as soon as I get that stabilized. It's not a big deal, but it's just it's annoying the fuck out of me that I need to do like 25 different things a day to basically scrape by. It's bullshit, and I I could do way better. So. So I'm going to <laughs> do better. All right, let's get into this. Superman, Mui Mui Handsome-O, Wapo. He is, he is a good looking man. Um, you know, seeing just a little bit that I saw of Alex working last night, it's absolutely fascinating how he glazes in colors. Um, and uh, man, it looks cool. It's really interesting too, because there's a Wolverine that he works through. And when he starts it, like the pencil drawing looks okay. Wolverine's hands look a little small. He starts laying in some color and I'm like, I don't really see where this is all going. And then, man, I like skipped ahead to like 18 minutes in and I was like, holy crap, this thing looks fucking insane. <laughs> it was so good. So I didn't get a chance to watch any of the full videos, um, but uh, I'm really, really curious to check them out. So uh, when I get an opportunity, that is going to be super fun to look at. And there seems to be quite a few. I really appreciate the fact that he's doing it. So Alex, if you ever see it, thank you so much for sharing your process because I mean, you're you're a legendary comic book artist and man, it's it's very very cool. So um my experience with Alex Ross's um Marvels was the first book that I saw of his and uh I loved it. I I remember showing it to my grandfather who was um I lived with and um, I was just getting into comic books and I was kind of, you know, I would try to like share my um, excitement of the the thing and, and I think he knew that I had always liked, enjoyed drawing and was pretty good at it and so it was one of those things where, um, you know, he knew even though I was a musician at, at heart I have an artist in me as well and uh, I showed him Alex's stuff to kind of like um, legitimize comics in a way where I was like, see, it doesn't just have to be, you know, like this, this other thing. It can be, you know, something that almost looks like fine art or illustration that you might see in, in an old time magazine. <laughs> Marbles in particular, too, really had that kind of vibe. Uh, man, this is so kick ass. I always tell people, too, you know, if you're interested in learning to draw, Alex is a great guy to look at in terms of um, iconic versions of characters. Not not that you need to emulate him. But what I'm saying is because he uses reference, mul multiple pieces of reference to this first piece, it's actually fascinating to see him um, kind of go through the photos and stuff like that. And... and his mind how he combines like an, a lighting idea on one piece with a pose from another and the color from another and he may have photos of a toy that's like lit it's really really cool honestly i mean i think that that you know he's working like a full-on like illustrator would uh 
but my point is, um, you, like, like sometimes when people are learning, they kind of try to mimic um, an artist that they admire. What's great about Alex is, is you kind of know that he's getting it from good sources. So that's my point is like when you see like shadows or lighting or little stylistic things that he puts on his characters, usually they're kind of based on one of two things. They're either based on um, classic, classic comic tropes, we'll call them no association with the youtuber um but uh like you know he'll he'll use jack kirby lighting or john romita senior um you know ideas um but then he'll he'll fuse that with um realism you know accuracy and things like that and then when you blend the two together you get what you get an alex ross man I talk about a wild storm. I would always have like, you know, uh, depending on how much space I had around my desk, I'd usually have 20 to like 50 little pieces of art inspiration that just kind of visually when I would walk in would kind of spike the artistic blood sugar and get me going. I'd always have one really, really nice Alex Ross something or other up. Not like a full like two foot by three foot poster, but you know, a favorite wizard cover or a, a comic cover that he had done. Like, look at this shit. This is so badass. And I'll tell you what, too. Green Lantern Corpse is no freaking joke. That book is a freaking reference nightmare. I've seen a script of Green Lantern. I wanted to kill myself. I couldn't pronounce any of the names. And there was like 50 million characters. <laughs> it was... I was like... This is like torture for an artist. Now, if you're a huge Green Lantern fan and you you have a real connection to all these characters, it's one thing. This is a beautiful, beautiful shot. Honestly, this is a ten out of ten. Man, that is kick ass. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty intense. It really is. I think I had asked for a sample script one time, and I thought like how Jordan looked kind of cool to draw. But I saw the script and I was like, I it would take me three days to figure out who all these characters are i i like don't have that level of patience sometimes this is really cool so he he actually inked his most recent book that he did um a patron of mine um T told me about it initially and so i looked it up and um it's really really cool but what's fascinating is he actually shows himself inking a page um in one of his i think it was a video that literally went up like a day ago so i watched a little bit of that because i really honestly seeing the book colored it was very very difficult to tell what technique he was using to me like parts of it looked ink inked and then some of it didn't and so he's using a very weird brush I, I to me it looks like a hog's bristle it probably isn't but it's a big brush i mean um the biggest brush that i've ever used for inking comics is like a four his looks like a like a seven or an eight it's gigantic it's very like it looks like it's very well used and he's not using ink he's using lick very like gouache gouache not wash gouache when he, the first time he said it even i got confused um but um yeah so he's using gouache and what he says is that if he makes a mistake he can actually get it wet and remove it i don't know how that works because i would think that it would leave some sort of smudge but maybe it, it will pull off of the artboard that he uses he also works on a lap board which i find very interesting he'll he sits at a drafting table that's got a bunch of shit like all over it um and and then he has a lap board that he kind of balances in his lap and he holds it and works with his other hand that's another thing i i i'm never really that comfortable doing that i need a very stable work surface when i work but you know it clearly works for him but anyway so so as he's inking the stuff, he goes in and he'll fill in the large black areas. Um, and this is not um, a reference to this piece. I'm saying that on his pen and ink stuff. And then he goes in and kind of dry brushes stuff. And it's really like a weird look to me. Like I'm not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the, the, the end result that he's getting on it. Um, but it's still really, really interesting to see. It's a little too, um, I, I, I don't even know what I would call it. Like it, it, it's um, the values are two in one spot for me. The blacks look great. Um, I just wish that he had a little bit more of a a, a a different feel for the textures that he's using. This is beautiful, but that's my own personal aesthetic. It's not right or wrong. It's just like 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 when I saw it in the book, I was like, it's, it's a little smudgy for me. 
and I, I do like dry brush, but I, it, it's, um, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to find an exact example. And there's some stuff that he's done in the book that's beautiful too. This is great. He was saying too, it was interesting. He was talking about some characters that are, that take longer to draw because he had just completed a really, really beautiful, um, uh, Marvel, well, I don't know if he just completed it, but it's a Marvel poster. It's going to be a mural they're going to use it for, but he did all the, he did all the characters individually. So each, he called them assets, which is like a, you know, commercial art term, but you know, each character is an asset that can be used for other things could be put on an individual cover or yeah, like individual cover, but then they could also be kind of put together to, um, create the, the whole mural piece. This is so his comment section on the, his videos is always very, very positive. People really love his work. He's inspired so many people to draw and paint and stuff like that. And it's very, very cool. I still, it's funny. I, I always will circle back to him at least once every year or two and kind of get into his stuff for a few days and, um, just enjoy like how good he is. These are great. Again, this is what I'm talking about with the, like, you know, if you're going to reference someone doing, like, big, heavy cast shadows and stuff like that, Alex is a really, really good artist to look at for that. His will be pretty accurate. And, again, sometimes... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I forgot about this. That's hysterical. That's funny. I totally forgot about that. Really, really tricky shot with all those upshots on those characters. That's that's like a high level of skill. And these are great. These these flying poses. He was saying too that like like he, he's got a very interesting perspective on comic books. That even like for someone like me who's worked professionally for close to twenty five years, made my balls shake a little bit. I mean, he's really got the old school mentality of like a penciler should be doing at least a page a day. That's fast, man. I, I know pencilers can do it. I've worked around a lot of great people. I don't consider myself technically slow as an artist. I'm just, I have less experience. So I'll hit more um, uh, challenges along the way where I'm like, it takes me a little longer to like think through um, problems. Um, this is funny. This really looks like, like, um, he posed someone with a cape and then like kind of had strings holding it. It's <laughs> it may not be, but it kind of feels that way. Uh, but um, yeah. And he was like, you know, uh, he was saying that like his stuff takes like twice as long, but then he said five times as long. And I would agree. I would imagine um, penciling and then painting a, a piece to these levels would take at least three to five days. Not all of them, but you know, I haven't seen his penciling videos, so I'd be curious of how he pencils this stuff. So uh, hopefully that there is a penciling video on his thing where he shows his process from taking his different pieces of reference and how he lays out a piece, because that, that would be really cool to see. Very interesting. I remember this. I have all these big books. It's funny. And his stuff, you know, it's, it's when you walk through Comic-Con and you're looking at a million different sort of visual stimuluses, you walk by an area where there's some Alex Ross prints, original art, banners hanging up. I mean, it definitely catches your eye. You recognize it right away as an Alex Ross piece. Um, and that's a, that's an important thing to have as an artist is a very, I mean, you don't have to, but he has a very identifiable style. This flash is trippy. Oh, it's like Sinestro flash or something. He's got the fancy mustache. <laughs> Sorry. I've got Discord open in the background. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, the, um, his Marvel work is great too. I mean, it's it's between Marvel and DC. There's so many iconic characters that he's worked with. It's insane.
<laughs> it almost looks like a woman's hair hairdo except for this <laughs> but like this part right here it's like he's got like a bob or something man cape cape flying in the breeze these are cool oh man this old school cover is so nice and he really um you know, he pays tribute to the classics, as we see here. But, um, you know, the, I think people enjoy that, too. The um, the homages. Comics is an interesting thing, because, you know, from an artist's point of view, you, you want to be original, and you want to, you know, kind of cut out your own space. But definitely in comics, there's such a deep fandom and such a long... And he talks about it, actually, in one of his videos, too. I heard him say... Where, um, you know, they'll try new things with characters, but generally speaking, what ends up happening is it only lasts for a little while, and then people really do kind of normally want it to go back to, the, like, the more iconic thing. So, um, and I would agree, you know. I think that every once in a while you have a flash of brilliance where something new happens to a character where it sticks around. But I was, like, for me... This is how I looked at comics, and I got it, honestly, from Travis Charest, and he didn't say it, but I I felt that he respected any character that he drew, and so, generally speaking, whenever he would draw a character, it was always really good, and sometimes the best version of that character that you had ever seen, and and um, I think... Uh, that's I, I again he never said it to me it was just something that I observed or, or projected onto his stuff but it when I when I like like even the worst DC character has an origin there's something that made that particular person become the hero or villain that they are and if you can tap into that element of emotion and psychology even a goofy character, if you treat it with respect, can look cool. I really do feel that way. That like, DC. I remember we were looking at one of the DC. They we, they gave us these hardcover encyclopedia books. I don't know if it was a series of them, but uh, the guys that I was sharing an office with were doing a lot of. Um, they were doing the DC MMO, so they needed reference for like everything. And I mean, DC had some really really goofy characters. There was one that was like a toaster. Or I don't even remember what it was. Just weird weird shit we would like laugh but in the back of my mind i was thinking like you know if you handle that character with some respect i'm not saying that it would be a great character but you could definitely do something cool with it, it looks like the dad from my three sons <laughs> ah this is really cool bruce tim i'm guessing oh it is fred mcmurray is okay so i was right and then the oh kathy ireland i could see kathy ireland uh so, Superman and Captain America go ahead in this ink drawing. Wow, I would have totally thought that that was Bruce Tim. That's nice, man. Alex should do a book like that. People would trip. Shazam. I I almost know nothing about this character. Is this is it Captain Marvel or Shazam? Or is there's I I don't I know that there's some sort of history between the two characters or uh, mean that there was like a name sort of thing going on, but yeah I don't know anything about this character. It never really I, I guess it did sort of appear in comics when I was collecting, but I I kind of only know it from like I think there was a TV show or something. Shazam, man, this is awesome. Oh, Cap. Oh, so it is Captain Marvel. I I get why DC would. Um, My apologies for big fans of Captain Marvel, but it's just out of my wheelhouse. It's not something that I ever followed. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I, God, like, his body of work is so insane, and it's at such a high level. God, these are great. Man, he's a good cartoonist doesn't surprise me Gee, those are great yeah it was really it was really inspiring seeing him work 
I always liked his YouTube channel, but like this is a new level of awesomeness for it that really like I was gonna share with my Patreon and tell people to like check it out because it'll it'll definitely get your uh, comic book juices going for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start wrapping this up because I do actually need to get to work. And like I said, I'll come back as quick as possible. I'll try to squeeze in like one video next week, but I'm really, really going to limit anything besides um, this uh, project that I'm working on to uh, design to give me freedom. <laughs> oh, goodness. Those are some creepy looking statues. What is that? Pride, Envy. They all look like Squidward, or this one does. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Nice planes on this head, damn. The, the other thing about Alex Ross is, I mean, I know that he had done some stuff before Marvels because I, I remember in Wizard Magazine they um, had, like, a comic that he'd done. He's always been really good, though. I, it's very rare that you see any old pieces that, I mean, besides, like, drawings when he was a kid, and even those have their own sort of charm. It's an interesting spot for a star down there. <laughs> it's funny because... <laughs> I always talk about like like decisions that you have to make as a comic book artist and it's like there's different you know like things like this pop up where you've got a shot like this and then you got to decide do I stick a star there I would have gone black personally I would have probably I always thought that that was the last star so I I don't know um there's a small part of me that maybe would have done that No right or wrong, friends. I'm just like... <laughs> Maybe it's a, a little bit of a joke. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Settle down, Rich. You're having too much fun. Oh, man. That's such a great panel. Fuck. God, man. Oh, he's even got a transparent there. I remember that. <laughs> it's funny because this is reminding me. So I got this book at DC, and they're like the um, they're kind of like the Marvel Treasury size books. So they're they're um, kind of a cardboard cover, but they're big. They're like um, I don't know, maybe twelve or thirteen by like fourteen. Or well, hold on, there'd be maybe seventeen inches tall and thirteen or fourteen inches wide. So they're pretty big. So I I used to. I used to park in the back of my house and I was going up the stairs and I was being so careful with the book because I was like, oh, new Alex Ross book. And I was getting my keys to unlock the door and I fucking dropped it and put a big ding in the corner and I was like, God dang it. Seriously, you klutz. I hate myself. <laughs> Whenever I'm trying to be super careful, that's when I get super clumsy. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has that. I dropped a Final Fantasy uh, statue cloud on a motorcycle. If people followed me on Instagram and remember that. I went to dust it. I, I looked over at it and I saw that it was kind of collecting dust. And I felt guilty that I wasn't taking better care of it. Because I really did like it. And uh, so I grabbed it super, super carefully. And I was trying to kind of bring it towards me. So I could get it somewhere safe to dust it. And I just, like, the pressure was too much. And I got fumble fingers and I freaking dropped it. It broke into like, I don't even know, a hundred pieces. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I put it all in a box and it's sitting in my garage. It's a project for one day. I could fix it, honestly. It's just it'll be a lot of work. I could buy it again for like 120 bucks. <laughs> uh, that's trippy. It looks like right out of like an old movie. That's so crazy. It just looks like an old movie still that's been colorized. It was funny because someone said that in the comments section. They said, when I first saw your comic books, and I don't know how experienced this person was, was with art, but, but they, they weren't sure if it was art or if it was photographs. But again, it pro more likely than not, it was someone that probably doesn't draw or, or is just getting into art. Depends on what book too, I guess. 
<laughs> Wonder Woman. I like how he did the hair. These are nice. Oh, wow. I remember this. It's been a long time since I've seen this. Oh, he couldn't shoot Batman. I love you, Batman. I can't shoot you. So, question for Batman fans. If he were to shoot Batman in the chest, is, there's he does, does he have armor under this in the old school things? Or would he just have jumped out of the way? He would have kicked the gun out of the kid's hand like this. whoop -ha! Is that cocaine? Looks like bags of coke ripping apart. The yayo. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Is this his reference? The dude's got very white teeth. That's weird. What is that? It looks like a real person's face, but the eyes are weird, and then the teeth look trippy. Huh. I have. I really have no idea what this is right here. I guess it's a photo. The eyes are bizarre. Oh man, that's nice. That's like looks right out of Arkham games. You know what's weird? It, it, this made me think of it. I haven't seen him paint the Joker in this book. I mean, we're kind of getting to that section, but yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, I I kind of think the Joker is probably one of DC's greatest villains. Yeah? What do you think? How do you not give the Joker some love? War on crime. This one made it home safe. <laughs> it's the Wonder Woman book that took a spill. This is a really great panel. God, man, that looks right out of like a John Paul Leone comic. You know, and again, this, 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 I think kind of debunks the whole like, because um, people used to, that, that are not as big of fans of Alex's work will be like, oh, Hughes's photo reference. And that like negates anything he's ever accomplished. Like, grab photos and try to put a page together like this. So, uh, I, you know, I encourage you to go for it and see see how how successful you are. This is not easy, reference or not. Don't don't get caught up in the hype. Honestly, even drawing with reference, there's a million decisions that you have to make. Here's a joker. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this is what I had said to someone recently, because people, like a co very common question is how long did that take for you to do? And in their minds, there's a few reasons why they're asking is that, that, that they want to gauge like, um, you know, for themselves, like, if, like a piece like this would take 12 hours. But one thing I'll say about like when, when you spend two or three days on a piece or 30 or 40 hours on a piece, once you get about seven to eight hours into something, the longer you stay on it, the more bad decisions that you can make over that next 22 hours. I'm not kidding. I'm telling you, the longer that a piece takes, you have a million chances to do some boneheaded thing, make the wrong call, make multiple wrong calls get kind of burned out i mean it's really like like it's and i'm not saying that speed makes it easier but but this idea of like well if i sat for 30 hours i could do something at this level it in some ways honestly it makes it even harder because you you ultimately what happens is you, you like say you, this you completely nailed and then you mess up this and you're uh, 23 hours into a piece it's a nightmare <laughs> oh man this is great so take it with a grain of salt but I'm just saying that like uh, yeah 
good target is I think like for a nice piece is 12 to like 18 hours. And if you can get it done in like 6 to 10, you're doing pretty good. Classic. <laughs> it's Robin's funny. But yeah, definitely check out his YouTube channel. I think you'll really get a kick out of seeing um, his process. I, I found it really, really cool, and I'm excited to be able to maybe watch like one of those videos a night as a little treat um, just to get an idea of, of an approach to painted work. It would be very cool. I was thinking about Scarecrow this morning, funny enough. Oh, man. Should I tell you the story of this? <laughs> so I had this comic. I had it forever. And I love the cover. Oh, I just love the cover. I thought it was so cool. And um, I had so many comics that I just was, like, trying desperately to, like, thin out my collection any way possible. Because it was just... I, I had too much that I... It was overwhelming me. So... Sometimes I would just save a cover of a book if I wasn't like completely nuts about the interiors. And so I ripped the cover off of this one. But I didn't realize that it's like the second appearance of Harlequin. <laughs> so it's a pretty valuable comic. But um, yeah, I only have the cover now. <laughs> this was years ago I did it. But I actually have the first appearance of Harley. But um, uh, yeah, I was like, oh man. Man, that's crazy. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. Is this a statue or is this a painting? Hold on. Oh, it's a bust. Wow, it's incredible. Oh, so maybe that other piece was another bust. Like, he might have a whole bunch of these. It wouldn't surprise me. It's really incredible. And the funny thing is, is they've gotten even better at doing this stuff now. But, boy, that's wild. The eyes are crazy. Oh, look. God, his setup at home must just be insane. Wow, that's really cool. I don't even have enough money to buy that table right now. <laughs> In fact... <laughs> oh, man. I saw there was a YouTuber who uh, is a guitar channel, and I, he can't be making that much money on his YouTube channel. He showed a, a shot of his setup. It was fucking insane. He had so much gear for filming, and I was like, man, alive. He's got like 250,000 subscribers, so it's, it's a legit channel, but his views aren't high enough that he's making a ton of revenue. He may have at one point, but not anymore. Wow, that is crazy. I don't remember these photos from this book, funny enough. It's it's really neat though. But yeah, when when you when you use photo reference, the one the one thing that makes it tricky is it's giving you a tremendous amount of information that's quite complex uh because there's there's so many um different uh facets to what's going on here. Really subtle shadows. Obviously, we can see the light effects and whatnot. Um, and then even just in here, all of this stuff, the planes, it's, it's pretty intense, but you know, the reference helps them clearly. That's cute. Oh man, look at that. How funny is that? You imagine Batman showing up on the scene? Hey, I'm here. Where's the crime? Beep, beep. <laughs> I like the idea of, like, Batman has, like, a girl over, and she goes in his garage, and this is, like, in the garage. She's like, what in the hell is that? He's like, don't, don't worry about it. It's just it's a project I'm working on. <laughs> Look at the dog. Who's that? Crypto? The bat dog? What's his name? I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen a bat dog. What's his name? Dr. Roofs? 
Uh, oh, the Bat Hound. Oh, okay, this looks more familiar. I think I've seen Kevin Nolan draw it. His name is Ace. Is it Ace? Ace the Bat Hound. Oh, he's cute. Was he always a German Shepherd? This looks like Adobe almost. Oh man, that's cool. Wow. I love his pencil sketches. They're so cool. Okay. We're going to go a little faster because I, I do kind of got to get going. What time is it? Where's my phone? Let me see. Just really quick what time it is. Oh, yeah. I got to go. I'm over time. All right. You guys have a great day. Let's get out of full screen mode for a second. We'll take a peek at like one more thing. Find something. Batman was kind of cool. All right, what do we got? All right, we'll end it on this. All right, so you guys have a great day. Like I said, I'll probably be, be back next week with like one video, but um, and until I get like my finances stabilized, I really need to focus on that because it's like I said, I'm just chasing my tail um, almost every day, and it's wasting a lot of time. That's the problem is is I can get down to business, make some money, and then. Um, focus on what I need to focus on. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good day. Have a great day and uh, a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon. All right, later.